In 1139, the Pope of the Catholic Church, Innocent II, issued a landmark order that would create a fundamental shift in power throughout Europe and the Middle East. The mandate would establish an order of highly trained knights that would answer to no one but the Pope. The order of knights would be formally charged with the safeguarding of pilgrims traveling to the Holy Land of Jerusalem and the defense of the lands which had been taken during the Crusades. For their service, they were afforded a multitude of privileges. They were given first choice of spoils of wars fought in the Holy Lands. They were made exempt from local taxes of kings and lords. All donations of things like money and land were to be put under the protection of the Pope himself. This order of knights would quickly go on to accrue vast amounts of wealth and resources. Unfortunately, that wealth and goodwill that they amassed for nearly 200 years could not save them from a violent purge by one of the most powerful monarchs of the time in 1307. Why was the King of France so eager to persecute these holy warriors? What role did the Pope play in their downfall? What legends and stories about this mysterious order have survived to modern day? This case file, join the theorist and polish off your ale while in chain mail in The Knights Templar. Welcome to Alien Theorist Theorizing, Case File 168, eh. The Knights Templar. I even said right before Case File 167. Case ah. File 167, <laughs> The Knights Templar. I'm Brayden. I'm Zell. I'm Dan. And I'm Andrew. And you're lying. You're not Brayden. You're the Hamburglar. <laughs> that toque. You're full of shit. Where's Braden? It's true. It's true. You uh, all right. bear a striking resemblance. Well, at least you're going to burgle something. You look like you're ready. I'm not going to. Yeah, I am ready. I look like I'm. What's the What's the name of the 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 bandits from Home Alone? Oh, the Sticky Bandits. Yeah. Oh, sticky yeah. Bandits. Yeah. 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 Sticky yeah. Bandits. All right. Hell yeah. Ready to dip your hands into some like Salvation Army. Coin. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's good. I take it back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to be going, stealing Salvation Army money. Just go back not, to yeah, burgling yeah. cheeseburgers. You're funnier when you're fat. We all know yeah, it. Yep. Bulk it's up. It's, it's winter time. Hey, fat Britain's back. I'm telling you, fat Britain's back. Don't worry about it. You can tell when he starts putting on weight, the beard gets thicker. Right. Oh, yeah. To fucking hide that hide fucking chin double chin. That's yeah, fair. Yeah. It's good. It's working. Smart. Really good profile. Side profile, straight nose. Front profile. There it is. Squidward. There it is. <laughs> yeah. No, it's just the winter weight. It's just getting back to the thick boy club. What are you? You're cultivating mass. No, you got to store of. up that fat for winter. When did yeah. I say Keep I was ashamed warm. of it? At any no, point. Don't. I'm not. I saw a single tear roll down your eye when I made the hamburger joke, but it's okay. <laughs> it did. It's a fine. little bit of me died. <laughs> It hurts. At least I didn't call you Grimace. That would have been way worse. <laughs> I, you know what, though? Honestly, I resemble Grimace more because from here, where you see my shoulders, it just goes out. <laughs> Straight pear shape. Like, yeah. Like, ask yourself, if you're listening, you probably have never seen me. But if you've ever seen the live stream, have you seen me anywhere below my chest line? No. It just it just goes wide. Oh right man, I have bottom. a picture. I have a picture from the whatever it was at a power hour where you were in the piano key tie. Yeah. Yeah. Oh I take man. it off. <laughs> that fucking that's gold. Get on Patreon, you'll see that picture. It's in the fucking Discord. It's <laughs> worth it. Every second of it. What picture was it? Was I don't know. You, you were tits out and all. You you had like <laughs> what were you, you had like a, a spell of drinking those. What were you drinking for a while? Oh, the black neutral. flies. The black fr- flies. Oh, no, you're on the man, black flies. Oh, yeah. You proceeded Dr. to strip Deadly. throughout the episode and ended up with just the tie at the, by the time we were finished. That, that was a rowdy case file, though. What the fuck were we talking about? I can't, I can't remember. even remember. 
Um, we got it was our liquors. first episode on Spotify. We were all wearing suits. Oh, yeah, that's right. We were all yeah. wearing suits. Yeah. <laughs> Dress code. <laughs> Yeah. Anyways, this this week we've uh, switched gears a little bit, doing a little, I guess it's more of a history, but ties into to some conspiracy for the most part. Ties into every conspiracy ever. All sorts of conspiracies. <laughs> I mean, this one goes everywhere from, you know, biblical tie-ins to 9-11 tie-ins, depending how crazy you want to yeah, get. You can get pretty deep. Let's get weird. Yeah, so let's get weird. Let's let's get weird. Let's, let's at least uh, do let's it. let Maester Daniel take us through a quick uh, origin story, and we'll we'll chime in. Because I mean, you could do a whole series of podcasts about Knights Templar, so we're gonna have to move. If pretty you quick. haven't been living under a rock uh, for the last like I don't know twenty years, like you have heard <laughs> of the Knights Templar, like you well, have I'm, heard of them, you know something about them. Probably about half of it is made up, but or so the other half, half involves real. Nick Cage. <laughs> well, we need Braden to listen because we're pretty sure he has been living under a rock because he looks like Patrick Starfish. But <laughs> Lining it's, up. Um, it's funny. Did you guys get that feeling? The second I started researching this one, I was like, I feel like I'm Nick Cage <laughs> unraveling mysteries. National There's fucking treasure. paintings. You know, we're all Nick over the Cage. world. What, dude? If if you feel like Nick Cage when you started this and not motherfucking Indiana Jones, there's a serious problem. Uh, it's good. I good felt point. like Nick Cage. Well, that's bad. That's not good. You know this what? I, I identify more with Nick Cage than I do with Indiana Jones. What? <laughs> oh man, The Last Crusade was the first Indiana Jones movie I watched. I think that was the only one. I, that was the first one I had on VHS. Me too. Yeah, and I watched it about. 742 times before I was 12. <laughs> well, some of that ties into what we're talking about. Some of it, not a little bit. Um, so a little background about the Knights Templar. This is the stuff that we do know for sure. Uh, that is historical fact. The Templars, also known as Pauperis Comilitones Christi Templicae Samononici, wow. or the poor fellow <laughs> soldiers of Christ and the Temple of Solomon is their full name. Did you, did you practice that? Yeah, how many times did. did you read that before? <laughs> He's a maester. <laughs> they just know Latin. That's all uh, it's just built in. Their their motto being non nobis domine, non nobis sed nomine tuo da gloria, which uh, translates to not to us, Lord, not to us, but to your name, give the glory. Uh, I like how it really emphasizes like it's a little redundant. Yeah. Not <laughs> they to say us, it a whole Lord. bunch. <laughs> when they like to push the whole poor thing pretty fucking hard, like their logo's got two knights sharing a horse. Very much so. Yes, that was their uh, kind of official thing that they would put on their flags or on their, uh, you know, representing them was a, uh, you know, a drawing or a representation of two knights that would ride on one horse. You know, tandem. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the Templars were founded or in Jerusalem. Uh, the the accepted uh, day is Christmas Day, uh, 1119 in the Church of the Holy Sepulcher, uh, one of the most you know, holy spots in, uh, in Jerusalem, uh, which marks the cru crucifixion and the burial and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Uh, their headquarters was actually given to them, uh, on the temple Mount, which is now the Al-Aqsa mosque, uh, and is the huge, you know, you can look it up. It's this huge platform rising above the city. And this is where legend says that the temple of King Solomon was built 2000 years before they were founded. So, um, that's where they get their, uh, the temple of Solomon it, at the it, end of their name. It is the holiest place in all the world. It is the third most holiest place in Islam. <laughs> After you have like the Kaaba and then you have the Prophet's Mosque and then you have the Al-Aqsa Mosque, which is the uh, that Temple Mount. So the two. It's the third most <laughs> religious <laughs> sacred place in all of Islam. Islam. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, the two kind of founding members that most often come up associated with the founding of the the Templars are Hugh de Pain or Hugh de Pain, and you have Godfrey de Saint Omer. Uh, they were the two kind of uh, Hugh de Pain comes up as more like the primary pusher for this thing. They had a lot of help along the way founding their their order, uh, what they were doing. Their main goal when they started out was that they, after the first crusade, 
and the formation of kind of the the crusader states also known as ultramer um kind of which in french is like out over the ocean or out the ocean on the side of the ocean you had these uh a lot of people were beginning to make pilgrimages pilgrimages into the holy land from the christian uh christian europe so in order to make that voyage is actually very dangerous. Um, once you got to like the, the port city of Jaffa and then you had to make your way, you know, inland to get to Jerusalem, uh, a lot of shit could go down between there and there, you know, your, your destination. So the, uh, the Knights Templar were, uh, putting together an order in order to protect these pilgrims. That was their, that was their main goal. You know, they took vows of poverty, chastity, and then kind of dedicated themselves to, protecting these pilgrims that was their original kind of objective god's knights and like here's a perfect example of why they had to do that so um yearly there's this yearly ritual called the miracle of holy fire and it's takes place at the church of the holy sepker so it's based around so after the first crusade whatever we've, they've got jerusalem right so you're having these influx of Christian settlers or pilgrims coming in there to have a look at where all this shit took place. So they're coming here for the yearly, um, what they call miracle of, uh, the lamp lighting. So there's a lamp that's right next to Jesus's tomb, right? So we know that Jesus died on the Friday and was rex- resurrected on the Sunday, but on the Saturday. So the Holy Saturday, what they would do is they'd go to the tomb where Jesus, uh, was laid to rest and on that Saturday, the lamp beside his tomb would magically, like, boom, miracle. Is that what lit. that song's about? This little light of mine. Oh, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to let it shine. shine. Is that what that's this about? Little- I, I, don't, I don't think so. <laughs> it is. It is so, now. Could be. I. You know what? I don't know. So maybe it could be. Sure. <laughs> so on 1119, you know, we have the pil- pilgrims coming in to witness this magical miracle of lighting of this lamp. Unfortunately for them, the Templars weren't around at this point in time to protect these individuals. So the, following the magical miracle of the lighting of the lamp, they decided that they were going to go out and bathe in the River Jordan. And there was about 700 pilgrims that went to do this, right? Jeez. And unfortunately for them, they were met by, uh, they were ambushed by a bunch of Muslim soldiers. Every single one of them beheaded, murdered, killed. Right. So that's a perfect example of why you need these Templars protection. What I don't understand if, if fucking, if the Lord is going to light a lamp, like that's the miracle. Why wouldn't the Lord just be like, Hey, psst, listen, fuck the lamp. We got 500 fucking Muslims that are ready to chop you guys up. Maybe don't go outside. Maybe don't go to the river. Like explain <laughs> to me how miracles work. That shit does not make sense to me. It's God's plan. What, what is his plan to get your head chopped off? That's, like that's, that's fucked what, up. Man. That's what the religious people would tell you. That's all God's plan. I mean, Allah was happy. <laughs> maybe, maybe was, it's all it's all the same God in the end. To put it in context, during that time, the the Islamic world was actually very fractious. At that point, it wasn't. It was like a bunch of the people who were at the 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 groups that were attacking pilgrims and those were more just like bandit bands. Like they weren't the 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 whole thing was like groups of warlords and stuff had kind of broken apart the the Islamic nations after the the Crusaders had taken Jerusalem. So at that point, it, you know, they might have been not been Muslims at all. Some of them, but it's just well, like, it was and this it was a weird fucking time. Like the, land the pirates. Everywhere. And this is before like the the definitive split between Sunni and Shia. Yeah. So you didn't even have like Saladin. This is like before Saladin. I'm pretty sure. Like, yeah. I don't even think he had really made his I don't know unification. no because who who was that was second who crusade. conquered no when yeah was, I guess when was that's right because he I'm sorry he oh. took that was 1119 because he took Jerusalem back right after he never lost Jerusalem he took Jerusalem back right if I remember correctly so you have these you have these Templars you have these knights who are uh, essentially a, a elite well they would be referred to as elite um a fighting force at some point um they had at their peak i suppose they had like 20,000 members at this point but a lot of historians will say a lot of those uh members were actually dedicated to the logistical side of to be. getting pilgrims to um 
to these places, uh, maintaining horses, maintaining the castles, maintaining lands that were uh, either bequeathed or given over to the the Knights Templar, because the Knights did start out as a very poor organization. They had very shitty gear. They were, had like, you know, secondhand swords, <laughs> shitty horses, everything, no real armor, you know, a lot of people, when they think of the Knights Templars, they think of these guys in the shining, you know, chain mail with the the white, the, the, the white tabard with the with the scarlet cross on it. No, it's but, more likely two hobos in burlap sacks riding one horse. Pretty much. <laughs> at the beginning. At the beginning. At the start. Yeah. At the beginning. <laughs> well, because like what we were talking about, right? Like we, we were discussing these these jobs that they had of protecting these these people coming on the pilgrimages, right? And that shit ended up turning out to be quite lucrative. Right. Like this ended up becoming one of the first international banking systems in the world. Right. They so they right? they the Templars did accrue a, a large amount of goodwill because they were protecting these pilgrims. They did participate in battles and they could be depended upon because in a sense, in a very real sense, they they were fanatics. And if you wanted somebody to fight in a battle, like if, if you want somebody to go out there and get crazy and, and fuck shit up, like there's nobody who fights harder than a religious zealot. Like these okay. guys were totally oh. committed to the cause. Dude, and if you, <laughs> if you totally believe they had a whole system set up with these pil the people planning to do the pilgrimage pilgrimages, right? Like you would leave, let's say France, England, and you would go in to your local fucking Templars business building or whatever the fuck they had. And you'd say, I'm going on this pilgrimage. I can't bring all my belongings with me. I can't bring all my money. So I'm going to give you guys that money. You're going to give me this voucher. I'm going to go on this pilgrimage. And when I get to where I need to be, I'm going to cash in this fucking voucher to the local fucking Templars. Dude. And they're going to give you your money back. Like that's, Dude, that's very, international banking. Very quickly. How, you know how lucrative that would be? How many people die on these pilgrimages? And you're just like, exactly. Yeah. So people with farms, people with vineyards, that's yeah. yours. That's the Templars now. Right. Not only that too, when they were gone on these pilgrimages, the Knights Templar would use the land. They would farm the land, make money off of it while they're gone. Yeah. It's and pile genius. on top of that, you had, you know, uh, during their time when these guys were pretty much the rock stars of the, you know, the crusades of Outremer, uh, Pope Innocent II issued a papal bull, like a pretty much a, an order the called the Omni Datum Optimum, which exempted the Templars from and obedience to local laws. It also meant that they could they could pass freely from wherever they wanted to go, and they were not required to pay Buddy, any the, taxes. <laughs> the, that's the first instance of diplomatic immunity. Of all Buddy, time. That's what's just like we got a fucking whole team of Steven Seagal's running around, like fucking <laughs> yeah. legitimately above the law. And you can't <laughs> stop these fucking guys. But like to me, the the only other time that that really like I've I've thought of something like that, it's like with Truman in World War II, right? With the CIA. Like when are when has there other been another group like that that's had complete I oh, I can't never say this fuck anonymity anonymity anonymity. <laughs> anonymity. <laughs> Well, nice pronunciation. Hey, How's trying, it feel? Man. <laughs> it's anonymity. Anonymity. I see. I still can't do it. Everyone's I don't got even a know if I said Everyone's it right. got a photography. Photography. Right. Yeah. So, and the, uh, like the Templars were answerable to essentially no one except the Pope. Like the Pope was their <laughs> boss. Like nobody could tell them what to daddy. do besides the Pope. Daddy. You know, the grand master of the order <laughs> would tell them what to do. The granddaddy. Uh, yeah, he's their daddy. That's fucking. <laughs> you don't want to get a spanking from the Pope. Listen, you know, so the, the Templars were immensely successful uh, order for, you know, nigh on. What is it like two, almost 200 years? Uh, and then and then comes this this what pe some people would call like a sudden fall from grace. So um, in. Fr on Friday the 13th of October 1307, a, a large, almost all the Templars who were in France were arrested and like morning, these were like morning raids. Everybody will tell you that these, these like, you know, uh, French soldiers and things like that busting into to Templar uh, facilities and buildings and stuff like this, arresting every single Templar that they could. Um you know, in France and then eventually trying to get them throughout 
Europe because Philip the fourth, the King of France at the time, uh, had charged the Templars with uh, a, a number of you know crimes. He executed like Order sixty six uh, on the Templars. Stole my yeah. joke. <laughs> Fucking stole it. I tried to slip in another joke earlier, but I missed it. And then I, I'll tell you in after hours. <laughs> <laughs> so it, he levied these charges against them for heresy, obscenity, witchcraft, homosexual practices, idol worship, pretty much any sodomy, which some historians would say that these are kind of like boilerplate. If you didn't like somebody, these were the these were the charges that you usually brought up against somebody. Well, this, there is one weird one, too. Like they they created a fucking like demon for them for them to worship you know what i mean they're like oh they they wa- worship baphomet and you like the only time you've ever heard of baphomet was in this situation no one's ever talked about him he's not in any other text or anything like that it's like they created this fucking demon for them to to worship that's the god that's like the goat like goat with wings or i guess maybe. yeah i don't know but was it, it was baphomet a made up they make him up or was he actually like a like a god from a previous time or something I, everything that I found, the only things I found uh, when I did my research for Baphomet had to do with the Crusades. That's it. Or not the Crusades or the Templar Knights. Right. It kind of, it. I know there's a, not off the top of my head because now I forgot and I forgot to put it in my notes, but it was like when they talked about Baphomet, it was like they just kind of like made it up and it's not like a real thing. Like they just like, yeah, they came up with a whole bunch of stuff. They kind of like put it all together. They don't know where the name Baphomet comes from. They're, nobody's really sure. Uh, they're like, it might come from this and it also might be a like um, like a mistranslation of somebody mentioning that some of the Templars were worshiping uh, Allah or Muhammad, I think was one of the things. So they were saying that they were heretics, uh, you know, in so much, in so many words, like they were guilty of heresy. Um, the, the official kind of end of the Templars kind of comes, uh, people will agree, historians agree, around 1314 when the last Grand Master, Jacques de Molay, was burnt alive at the stake. Who there's fucking Damn. okay, so there's some really cool lore with this. Now, none of this is fucking proven, obviously, but this is the whole lore behind it. So, like Dan was saying, uh, De Molay was burned at the stake. His first thing that he said, he's like, I want to be facing um, uh, uh, Notre Dame Cathedral, and he wanted his hands bound so he would be praying while he was burned alive. Shit, while he was burning alive, he called out. To uh, Pope Clement and King Philip, he said, God knows who is wrong and who has sinned. Soon a calamity will occur to those who have condemned us to death. He said that while he's burning alive. Okay. Epic. Within a month, within a fucking month, Pope Clement was fucking laying down praying in a church. That church was struck by lightning. Get out. Burned to the ground, fucking dead. Same month, Philip the fuck uh, King Philip died in a hunting accident. Powerful curse. Didn't right? Did, well, it didn't go further than that. Didn't it? Like, didn't it? Wasn't King Philip's son something affected with his son? Because I thought there was like a the curse of the kings or something it was called. I mean, that could just Maybe. be inbreeding, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's very good. But you know what I mean? Like, it's interesting stuff. But like. If he's cursing people, that's some that's a little bit of witchcraft. So maybe he wasn't, you know, the Templars weren't so innocent. I mean, didn't God do that shit? Couldn't God be like casting plagues and yeah. throwing giant fucking grasshoppers at them? Read the Old Testament? He smites motherfuckers yeah. Come on. all day. Yeah. Hey, listen, you better kill your you better sacrifice your son or he's gonna fucking do Earthquakes, some crazy shit to rains you. Rains of fire, freaking plagues. You yeah, can pretty much God take smites any them. religious figure and they're the cause of untold destruction over countless thousands of years <laughs> all it makes it super easy if you're like a, i think if you're like a, a shitty person back in the day and you want to like murder and pillage you do it in the name of god it makes you feel better <laughs> yeah. so, that's what it did though that's what they I know that's what this fucking these rules did for these guys they're like hey listen it's all good man it's all in the name of god you can kill whoever the fuck like you can get away with murdering and fucking doing whatever the fuck you want if you're a templar yep unless the pope says not to. blessed by well, god you can get away with everything for, from right? from you know historians kind of agree that the, the, the Templars sometimes get a, a bad rap. Like there's this kind of association that they are kind of like these murderers, killers, you know, 
you know, mercenaries, whatever. But from actual historical accounts, like the Templars were actually a lot more respectful than some of the other, like, you know, secular what would be with considered the, the secular. Hey, well, listen, there's, the there's, there's but, bad like, apples with every crusader, right? <laughs> every every pil- pilgrimage and crusaders have their bad apples. So th- the Templars were no different. I'm sure there right. were some good ones and some bad ones. Yeah, no no occupation is free of error and shitty yeah. people. Well, the the Templars actually, because they were so steeped in kind of that, you know, the 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 banking, I guess you could call it the banking world. They actually did have to interact with like, you know, other cultures. They had to interact with their Muslim neighbors in some places where it's like, we have to exchange money for goods. Like once you take over a city, you don't just expel all the Muslims. You don't expel all the people who live there. Right. They, they live beside, you know, people of the Islamic faith and things like that. So there's a lot, there are at least more than a few accounts of the Templars treating most Muslim you know, people that they weren't, you know, and effectively engaged in battle with for kindly, like, like with respect. The ones they were in battle with, like the the stuff you read on both ends. Don't say me, like I'm not pinning it on the Templars Equal, yep. or the Muslim. It's the most fucked up shit I've ever heard in my life. Like King Richard the Lionhearted lining up 3,000 Muslims right in front of Saladin and decapitating them because they were trying to work out a treaty and it was taking too long. Yeah. The crusades are definitely like, a wildly violent and crazy time. And if you want to get into that stuff, like, yeah, read about it because it's not. So yeah. most of the stuff that you've either heard about today is actually stuff that came out and like the, it came hundreds of years after. But if you really want to read like historical accounts of the crusades are actually pretty cool. And it's really interesting. I enjoy the politics and kind of like the way stuff kind of moved around no. and how stuff broke up is immensely fascinating to me but anyways so you have the templars broken up they're like officially dissolved by the pope like or you know suppressed by the pope there's a there's a papal order put out to like the the templars are to break up and and no more templars that's it they're gone so so there was about 56 of them burnt at a at stake right there's a number of them that that were uh you know arrested charged and found guilty at least in france uh of these crimes or they were they admitted to these crimes most of them under torture uh, i mean if you weren't in france though your chances of fucking getting away were pretty fucking good yeah a lot a lot of no i was just gonna say other than the ones that were in direct contact with king philip and pope clement you know what i mean they were able to fucking move on and do other things start farming and shit like that yeah. right? like that we know of there was only 56 of them that were murdered after this declaration or whatever you want to call it one one of the one of the one of the interesting points in Freddie Silva's book, uh, The First Templar Nation, that I had made a note on was that like during the this time where they're being tortured, one uh, Templar knight made a cryptic statement and he said, and I quote, and this is quoted from Freddie's book, which he quotes from something. Uh, <laughs> it's all quoted. Uh, he, well, he's quoted it, but this, like he, everything's very well sourced, but this one quote, I was like, there wasn't a, source for it but anyways uh there exists and this is under duress while being tortured there exists in the order a law so extraordinary on which such a secret should be kept that any knight would prefer his head cut off rather than reveal it to anyone oh little mystery what's what's the secret so you have secret secret (laughs) is killer secrets (laughs) <laughs> they've got the a knights secret. templar are kilroy that's the secret <laughs> I, I buy it yeah so if you are in any way you know as we are interested in the conspiracy world you will uh, inevitably run across templar conspiracies and you know the stuff that freddie silva writes about is you know there is some sort of secret that the Templars held that could have been a tribute, you know, could have been a uh, contributing factor to their, you know, some people would say suspicious rise to, you know, prominence and, you know, power within the European and Crusader and European and the Crusader nations and things like that. So a lot of, uh, you know, conspiracy theorists and, and people are, are always fascinated by the mystique that the Templars hold, you know, that why were they persecuted so quickly? Like why did Philip the fourth decide after, you know, 
all of this service that the Templars had provided, you know, why were they just cut down? Why was their order, you know, obliterated within a matter of years, you know, maybe like a decade, you know, how does this, like, what caused it? What, what happened? It's all about the Benjamins, man. Right. And, and how could a powerful order of that, you know, such a powerful influential order that had access to so many resources, uh, be able to, could it really, could it actually have been crushed? Did, were there survivors? Did they have something that kept them safe all this time? Have they been, um, you know, just biding their time or have they, they, they changed their, it just changed their name and then, you know, uh, began an, a life as a, as a new type of order. Uh, one of the biggest ones that you'll probably come across is the association with the Templars with the Holy Grail. That's probably mm. one of the biggest ones that you get. If you read the Da Vinci Code, um, spoilers. <laughs> the the Holy Grail for them is that like the the the, the crux of the book is that the Templars were guardians of the Holy Grail and they had survived by keeping the secret of what the Grail was actually the bloodline of Christ, right? Like the actual blood, like Jesus and Mary Magdalene had had a son or a child and had you know, continue to this day. And the Templars were charged with the sacred duty of protecting that. Because the Roman Catholic church would want them all dead. Yes. Well, essentially. Cause yeah. they don't want to, they don't want to know that Jesus was Jesus be banging it on. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, it's funny though, because like the, the, the thing you hear a lot about the Holy Grail was, it was the cup that Jesus used at the last supper. Right. Mm -hmm. And apparently when he was, when he was uh, put on the crucifix, somebody went up to him and collected some blood in this cup. Mm -hmm. like, and <laughs> like, what do you, like the dude's not a fucking bag of wine. You know what I mean? Walk up, just, it's all good. Jesus, like just, just stay still for a second, brother. I'm just getting a little, you know, just a little blood, man. It's Off all, the big toe. What you, what's Jesus saying to you? Like, how about you fucking cut me down, dude? Like, you know why? No, he wanted to be I up there. Understand. He's dying for your sins. Like, Take a little what a drama know, queen. Man. Oh, Jesus. All for the show. I guess it's got a flair for the theatrics, but yeah. I don't know. But that makes sense though. Cause if it like the, you know, the, the grail was Jesus's blood in this cup. Instead it's his bloodline. It's his heir. Or, you know what I well, mean? It makes, like, it makes sense. Cause it, kind if, of buy if that a bit. you go by the theory that J Jesus was a divine being and he came and died for his sins, he wasn't supposed to like, or he was, he was descended from a line of Kings, the, the ancient yeah. line of Kings, even that much. Yeah. Yeah. But the most important thing about this to remember is the fact that this cup didn't have jewels in it. It wasn't fucking pretty. It was dusty and shitty looking. <laughs> so don't be the Nazi and drink from the fucking nice cup. <laughs> that's the, how you face the nuts. penitent man, the 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 penitent man. So a lot of the, a lot of historians will pin the kind of, uh, will pin the grail legend on a uh an author uh who was also a german knight and poet uh wolfram von eschenbach or eschenbach <sighs> germans have the coolest name <laughs> who they based the yeah, coolest fucking who based his work off christian de troyes uh romance known as percival and it's kind of like a whole story about a guy who kind of like falls asleep it's kind of rip van winkle dream midsummer's night kind of weird you know trippy uh, story kind of like that flight of fancy um, where he had mentioned this grail and it, 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 in the story, in the original story, it is not so much uh Christian uh, refers to it as a grawl, but in French and like the original Hebrew, like grawl was not actually a cup. It was actually like a plate or kind of like a deep plate, almost like a bowl is what, you know, people talk about. It had no really holy connotations at the time or the original from the original writing and no mention of the Holy Grail or the Grail being holy or a Grail even existing, <laughs> you know, being associated with Jesus Christ had ever been mentioned before, like the late 12th century when Chrétien wrote this. So like wrote 1200 years after the figure, whoever Jesus Christ was, was born. And then because he he didn't he didn't live a long life. So he was dead. He was dead. In like it was like 30 or something, wasn't he? Right. So tw like almost 1200 years before any mention of this magical grail. Right. 
And then it never came up until that time. And then, um, you know, in the original stories, they didn't write anything about it being the cup present at the Last Supper or, you know, catching the blood of Christ off the cross. Uh, none of that. It's just it was a little um, bit of maybe the game telephone was going on. <laughs> Perhaps, you know, and a couple couple of uh, translations, a couple of uh, epics later, you know, best selling novels. You get just the Holy Grail. A couple of good writers couple good writers yeah, a couple good writers i, I will tell story. you da vinci code was cool when i read it back in the day it's fun but it was a good, it was great great book. Book. good book great book uh, i'll admit i only seen the movie but the movie was great yeah. i'm yeah, assuming the book was movie. great so the next association that you kind of get into conspiracy wise is you get this idea um or a lot of people will say that the templars just changed their name and became another organization oh, that is wait a, Dan, before you say what you're about to say, we got to take a short B break because that topic might lead us down some rabbit holes. So leave you on a little cliffhanger. We'll be right back. Okay, back. Got a couple new beers. Continue on with some Knights Templar. Correct. Ready, go. So now the the Templars, after being officially dissolved, there's this idea they've that, rebranded. <laughs> yeah, rebranded, ready to go. Um, and so now you have the Templars associated with the Freemasons. There is this uh, ongoing kind of you know belief, or you know, su- you know there's might be some support. Not really. There's like <laughs> there, there's some people who will believe that the Templars and the Freemasons are one and the same, or that the, the a sect or an offshoot of the Templars became the Freemasons. Um, somebody will tell you. Uh, some people will tell you that is you know 100 fact. There's other people say that that is not a, exactly what happened. Um, t- to to kind of understand how that came about, um, you know, you, a little history in the Masons will probably. I mean. Probably if we're a conspiracy podcast, we'll probably get into the Freemasons, Full like a on, more yeah. comprehensive history down the road. Um, but a short little kind of origin story is that, you know, the Freemasons quick, is the origin quick of the side name. Note, quick side note on the Freemasons that I have a buddy who's a Mason, been a Mason for years and years and years. Met him a couple years ago. He's a huge fan of the show. He, without me having to ask, said, hey, man, if you guys ever do an episode on the masons i would love to come on and just talk about stuff he's like i'll have to have another guy sitting with me from the hall just to make sure i'm not saying stuff out of line but i'll I'll come and answer any questions is this the lighthouse guy lighthouse guy no no the lighthouse the guy that made us do the fucking lighthouse episode no no no, no that's not that guy okay no good old <laughs> shitty colin no <laughs> fucking colin yeah come on um, you know, just to get into a little bit of history of the Freemasons, uh, the origin of the name, for example, is that you had back in the medieval times, you had two kinds of different types of Masons, you know, people who worked with stone. You had your rough Masons worked with hard stone, laying foundations, raising walls, kind of the basic, you know, nitty gritty of the stuff. But then you had these other um, type of Masons, a more mobile type that were the ones who worked on the fine facades and the cathedrals and worked with the softer stones, uh, freestone as some called it. And mm-hmm. so these masons were considered more elite, uh, you know, a higher tier of masons. It's the skill that it takes, you know, to work with these stones and, and get it done. And these masons were referred to as freestone masons or Freemasons for short. So that's where you get the word Freemason. Right. <laughs> Mind blown. <laughs> so the the uh, the rough stone masons were the grunts. The free stone masons were the revered artists. Sure. I mean, yeah, you can have like you know, you have your carpenters and you have your wood carvers. Essentially, you know, it's kind of probably a separate set of skills. Framers and your finishers. Oh, that's that's yeah, that hits home right that, there. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Zell. He's a finisher. He's a fucking Lannister. <laughs> Got to be perfect. No quarter inch gaps. No hammer saw needed. Now. The Freemasons, uh, you, back then, uh, if you were just a general person, like you were just a regular person, your your life was tied to the land that you held or, you know, in a feudal society, the, the land that you were given to by a lord or whatever, your king. Um, you know, you, you didn't really have a very mobile lifestyle because you were farming, uh, you were a blacksmith, you're, uh, 
you know, tailor, whatever, you know, you weren't moving around a lot. On the other hand, you had, you know, a profession such as masonry where you actually, you had to move, you know, especially if you're uh, working with the freestone things, it's not like you're working and building, you know, 30, 40 years to build a, a single cathedral, you know, 20 years, you're like, you would go in, you do the carving and then you would move on. So these, these masons, because of their lifestyle, uh, they, they recognize the need and for a, you know, an organization, you know, for them to be able to move from city to city, be able to find lo- things like lodging, like, you know, food, you know, resources, whatever they needed from city to city, because, you know, it's, it's kind of help each other out. And they're, you know, it was probably not that big a world of, of stonemasonry. It wasn't like, a you know, everybody kind of knew each other. Oh yeah, that's Jim. He did the uh, the cathedral on uh, on Maine. There, <laughs> <laughs> he did all the brickwork there. Walking around town, oh Shoddy yeah, job if yeah. you ask me. Look at so, that! Look at that grout work. Brutal. Some fucking crooked stones over there, <laughs> yeah. pal. Now you can imagine that if you were moving from city to city and you had these kind of mutual assistance associations, you would need these things to be actually pretty exclusive you wouldn't want any scrub watch walking off the street and just being like oh hey yeah i'm jim i'm the one who did the you know (laughs) over there worked on notre dame or you know over there in nice and like i whatever okay like see the sidewalk you're walking on these are my bricks Hmm. if there's one thing we know about masons they don't want no scrubs (laughs) Hmm. so they went about You know, this is where you get the origins of the, uh, you know, systems of secret hand signs and these rich, you know, knowledge of rituals that have been uh, supposedly handed down from ancient times. And these are how these uh, people involved in these societies or you would get access to these private meetings. This makes a lot of sense to me that they would just shift something like this, because especially if, you know, it's kind of sounds like when you're reading into these things that they stumbled ass backwards into creating the banking system as we know it, where like all of a sudden you're in control of all this wealth, right? And you're just like, oh shit. So it's like, you know, when they're disbanded and stuff, it's like the Templars would have been holding on to an unbelievably, like an unbelievable amount of assets and wealth, uh, treasures, land, possessions, where it's like they would have had to transfer that somewhere, right? Like, hey, this say we never had this. This is now the the Masons, <laughs> not the Templars, right? It's like all of, a, all of a sudden the system, this banking system would have been too valuable to just fall apart. Well, it weren't like not to backtrack too too far, but like not that long after King Philip, you know what I mean, burned a bunch of these fuckers on the stake. He weren't they not absolved like within like months of that happening? Privately. They were, but still, so they got to keep all their fucking shit. Some of them that did a, a, a majority, the of, the, burnt, a majority of the silver and like the lands, at least within France were all taken, but uh, you know, confiscated by the crown taken. But the, so the rest of them got to keep their, and they got pensions. Well, as far as I some understand of them did, well. some of them did, but, um, you know, we do have historical evidence that supports that, you know, that even though they were, you know, absolved of their crimes, the, the order was officially suppressed by the next pope. Like it right. was, you know, it was officially dissolved. And so those lands and those holdings had to go to someone. So most of it, so like places like, say, Spain and Portugal, where the Templars were still, you know, really popular because they had they had essentially, you know, uh, aided in the Reconquista, like to taking back the the Spanish, kicking the Moors out of Spain and Portugal, like everybody loved the Templars over there. King of Portugal, King of Spain, they loved them. Well, especially like remember Alfonso the Battler, he was the like Alfonso the Battler, who was the king of uh, Aragon back at what was it like in the eleven hundreds, let's say. He was such a huge fan of the fucking Knights Templar that when he died, he left his entire kingdom to them. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, think about the fucking riches there alone. Why, why though? Like, you know what I mean? What? Because he was a holy why? man. He was a religious holy man. And he fucking. Why like, not leave it dude, to the church? Well, but because these guys were doing the church's work. They were the church at the time. 
He was a war dude. His nickname was the Battler. How fucking badass is that? What embodies his mantra better than these holy fucking badasses? Okay, just just before I forget, I'm right? gonna jump in and say that it was the chin on parchment, which eventually found that like that was that was just like in 2001. They were digging through the Va Vatican archives and someone stumbled upon it. Who was that? Barbara Frail in 2001 mm -hmm. st stumbled up upon this like parchment, which she realized to be significant in it. Yes, it absolves like the Knights nice Templar after yeah. most of them were like pretty much crucified or burned at the stake for heresy. They're like, actually... Well, 56 of them were. 56 of them But were. still, but that whole order was then like it's disbanded after, but they did absolve. They're like, you know what? That was a mistake. And this was like the only piece of evidence that they found, but it, like 800 years later. Yeah. Hey, no harm, no foul, yeah, guys. No we deal. fucked up. I'm sorry. No, no biggie. It's cool. Well, it didn't because if they transitioned, if they transitioned into the fa Freemasons, made a new society and we're kind of uh, like, for you know what? They were like, hey, listen, we don't need to get our hands dirty. We don't need to be riding, you know, two men on a horse anymore. We'll, we'll just control everyone's money, right? This is way better. This is way better. We'll just control everyone's assets city to city. Are they though? Are the free Freemasons doing that? I thought they were just building cool shit. Well, I mean, yeah. like medieval Freemasons were were builders and they formed fraternities of other builders. And eventually you go through the ages and then like becomes more like modern Freemasonry is less about builders, more about fraternity and membership. It's not, you're not actually building yeah, stuff that anymore. fucking... It's that group that your fucking, you know, your your great uncle or your fucking grandpa is a part of. <laughs> Dang it. They got rivals with the Shriners. Dude, you always you know meet I mean? someone, <laughs> you shake their hand, and, like, now that I, like, in the last, like, you know, five years understood, like, Freemasons more, sometimes you shake a guy's hand and you notice the ring. Or you notice. The ring yeah. or the this bumper sticker. Yeah, like, and you just notice, you're like, these guys are, you see guys a, are fucking everywhere. You see a 1998 Buick sedan with the fucking Freemason sticker on the bumper. Yeah. You know what's up, man? They hanging outside the bingo hall or bowling alley. Should I join? I've got a guy who who like wants me Do to it. join the Masons. You wouldn't get it. Is, I know. I was I was there when we talked to that one guy when you were just moved there. Is that the guy? Oh you're yeah. About? So I, no, that's not the guy. That's not the guy. It's uh. Aren't you already part of? You're part of the fucking Blue Knights. I thought you're already part of an organization. I'm, I'm, dude, I'm part of all the organizations. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Gotta well, like, join them all. <laughs> Brain, what you're saying is that the Knights Templar, by by either on per, like through whatever means, they formed this like banking system, and then they were kind of disbanded, but then absolved. But they're like, you know what? We don't have to be the Templar anymore. We can just take this incredible wealth and just kind of go this way with it. But they're not offering any like what services are they offering? Like the reason why they were able to be those bankers because they're like, hey, we'll fucking protect you. Like, what are they doing now? I'm like, hey, I'll build you the coolest shit out of stone. But Just listen, give me all your money. Hear me out. Here's the thing. So before they were saying like, hey, you're going on this pilgrimage. Leave your wealth with us, and when you get to that new place, because other people are leaving their wealth with us in this new place, you bring this voucher, and we will give you the wealth back there. Right, so they're just holding people's money, but very but quickly. There's more to it, though. Like they were still getting that protection. Yeah, but very quickly, very quickly, you would realize that, like, man, we're holding this people's money. Like, and now that you're exploiting their lands and doing stuff like that while they're gone, very quickly you're going like, who gives a shit about protecting these people? Let's just say, like, hey, you make it there, yeah, your stuff will be waiting. We guarantee it. We're the Templars. And uh, you get there and your money will be there good as gold, my friend. Yeah, but as far as most of these people are concerned now, you're a bunch of sodomites and Baphomet fucking worshippers. Yeah, but not not if you're not if you like transfer. Say, so say the Templars had this kind of wealth and say the Freemasons were already around. This was an or like a, a very powerful, not even powerful, but just like a large group like of of people in the areas like that were in this group. And they went, hey, guys, we want to bring this into your group and they're like we just need a place that has members everywhere to get this kind of off the ground to transition this this banking system yeah. that we have could be like I, I don't know in my brain i just picture them them all like all these t templars that escaped i picture them like the end of fuck the spaniard maximus walking through the fucking tall hay or grass and with his fingers listen to that sweet freedom techno song and that's it. They just retire to their sweet farm and everything's fucking well, done. I, and they made it with their lives. You can go with more historical and say like a lot of the Freemasons ended up going to like Portugal and Scotland, right? And forming like changing the name of their order, but it's kind of the same type of thing. Isn't that not how it worked? 
Some did. Uh, actually, you know, a large or like a, a relatively large amount of uh, Templars, like they got absorbed into other organizations. So some of them became, you know, like Knights Hospitallers, like the Knights Hospitallers were also another uh, another order that actually predates the Templars by a couple decades, I believe, or a hundred and whatever. You know, there's the Night House Spittlers and there was another one. I can't remember off the top of my head. There was a third it one. It starts with a T. It starts with a T. It's like the, the Teutonic Knights. Yeah. Teutonic. Yeah. There you so go. yeah, the Teutonic Knights, which were the, they were the three big ones like back in the day. Like, um, and there was some, there was some rumblings about like Philip the fourth, like after he was done with the Templars, like he was like Knights Hospitallers are next. So, well, didn't he, but like before this whole bullshit blew up, didn't he try to like broker some deal between the Hospitallers and and the Templars, some type of like peace treaty to get them to combine, join forces. I think so. I can't, yeah, I can't yeah. remember off the top of my head, but there was some talk of them kind of becoming or merging into one or kind of whatever. Cause the, then he the, just pulls a fucking Brutus. And right. The, the Spittlers were supposed to be like a holy pa- pass Pacific order, order. Like they were very like, they don't fight. Like that was their kind of whole thing. It's like, they didn't really fight anybody. They weren't, they were, they would defend, but they wouldn't fight like the Templars would. They weren't really that kind of thing. Um, you know, if you left, uh, you know, a castle, well, no one knows their name. They weren't fucking badass. <laughs> nope. So, okay. So I will say the stuff about the Freemason things. It, 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 you don't really get the association with the Knights Templar until the 1700s. Like around the 1700s is when you start seeing the rise of this kind of, uh, association of this legend that the, re- that the, uh, that the Freemasons have some sort of chivalric background, uh, that goes all the way back to the Crusades and that uh, these uh, that the Freemasons have this kind of uh, like aristocratic origin, you know, right. this is something like this. So some has histor- don't they both don't they both have ties to the Temple of Solomon, though? Well, isn't that the one yeah, thing that the, the Freemasons like they kind of had a big thing because their 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 thing back in the, the days was kind of like one of their. uh one of their kind of rituals, like at the end of the day or something was like to read the Bible, but they would specifically kind of concentrate on the, uh, the chapters, I think it's, it's Chronicles, uh, that, that talked about in, in a lot of detail, a lot of crazy detail for some weird reason. Um, in, in the Bible, they talk about the construction of the temple of Solomon. It's like, it is the one point. It's like one part of the Bible that is you know, astoundingly detailed about like what the, how, what, what the construction was like, how big it was, what everything was made of. It's got like this whole, you know, there's a whole big thing. I always you know, like that whole- about the Bible is that like, it seems more accurate or more detailed and stuff that's written thousands of years actually before like that first, like the Bible, like the old Testament and stuff like, Oh yeah. 2000 years ago, there was this temple, uh, was, you know, Solomon's temple, uh, all this stuff. Yeah. And you're like, okay, but you don't really, you don't, this stories about, Jesus Christ don't actually come out for hundreds of years after this. Like, 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 like okay. I always yeah. find that just weird. So, yeah. So there's a lot of like there in, in the, in the Freemason kind of things, there's a lot of, uh, you know, references and, 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 you know, stuff associations with the, the temple of Solomon, like the twin uh, pillars, this is like Joaquin, Joaquin and, and, and Boaz, I think, or Jack Owen and Boaz, like the two bronze pillars, fabulous bronze pillars of the temple of Solomon is what you kind of get. So, uh, yeah, so they both kind of have this association with the temple of Solomon. So you could make that connection. A lot of historians will say that the, the original origins for this, you know, the Templar Freemason connection is, uh, by a Scotsman named Andrew Michael Ramsey, who is a Jacobite lit in exile from France or living in France. Sorry. Uh, he was an exile from England, I think. Well, from Scotland, he's a Scotsman. Duh. And, uh, he, uh, he was chancellor of one of the French Grand Lodges. And so at this time, the it was becoming uh, lucrative or whatever for the Freemasons to kind of bring in or attempt to bring in more uh, members of the aristocracy. It's like to be in order to become more influential, you know, have more money, have more resources. You kind of wanted to bring in more people who had access to those things. But the, the trick is the French aristocracy would not be interested in joining a thing that, you know, Oh, you're like, what you guys are Freemasons. You guys just work with your hands. Ugh, gross. Like, mm. ugh. You know, that that's French, you know, 1700 French aristocracy were, were, 
This is suck pre- a la bleu. Yeah, this is almost <laughs> pre it's filthy. It's about French Revolution <laughs> time kind of stuff like that. They're like, Ugh, I did not get my hands dirty. Are you crazy? Like, yeah. you know, Tabernacle. Tabernacle. disgusting. <laughs> I spit on you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know? Stilo bicyclette days <laughs> <Bibliotech. laughs> Bibliotheca. So calculatrice. Ramsey. C'est un silo. C'est un silo. <laughs> <laughs> <It's silo. laughs> No one so Ramsey is joke, probably the you. first or is is the first mentioned introducing this this wholly fictitious crusader background into the Freemasons origin story in order to bring in the nobility of France in order to give them, um, you know, the kind of recognition that they would want these these this social, uh, you know, to, to, to lift them up in the social hierarchy, you know, they wanted all those things, you know, they want the nostalgia, they want the romance, you know, Ramsey was marketing the, the story to the French aristocracy in order to get them to come in and see the Freemasons, not as people who were, you know, just regular, you know, stonemasons, like regular laymen work workers, you know, but they were knightly warriors that they were, you know, in the Holy land fighting the infidels and, you know, things like that. So that's, uh, a lot of historians will kind of cite that as the origin of the Templar Freemason connection. Right. So, um, you know, he, in his version, Ramsey goes on to kind of uh, say that the, 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 the Templars w- were attempting to restore the Temple of Solomon where their, you know, where their headquarters was at, you know? And so uh, in order to do that, uh, they had come up with all these secret signs and these rituals uh, to protect them uh, from their Muslim enemies, you know, who could have otherwise, you know, infiltrated their order and, you know, killed them or whatever. So mm, there's kind of that. So uh, to that, you know, to further that, you had other things that kind of pile on to the, to the Crusader links. Uh, you have another kind of, a personality that pops up in 1760. You have a, a Frenchman who who actually pretended to be a Scottish nobleman and, you know, called himself or got, went by the name of George Frederick Johnson. And he said that he had direct secret, you know, direct access to Templar secrets or whatever, you know, whatever those could possibly be, you know? So it's not, there are a lot of people who who came in and just, this is, you know, what 600 years after the Templars are existed. And now you, you start seeing all these people kind of coming in and, you know, trying to make this connection. They're starting to use the mythos of the, of the Templars that become like more of a myth now. And then you start to see it like kind of creep in. Right. They, I mean, they had already achieved, you know, mythical status by this point, you know, they had been essentially kind of wiped off the face of France and it was just kind of like, you know, you could kind of with so much blank, with so much, you know, missing, you could kind of put anything in there. And this is kind of what you you would see, you know, with that. <laughs> well, it's, it's one of those things, too, where you think about it like they would have controlled a vast amount of wealth and treasure from just even their banking system alone. So when they were when King Philip was like may or may not allegedly have owed the money, it was like, hey. <laughs> I don't want to pay hey, you. Oh. Hey, how much do hey, I owe you? Forget Whoa, about it. Don't worry about buddy. it. Hey, I'm walking here. <laughs> You're dead. You're dead. You hear me? I'm not paying you. And you forget about all it. Dead. Eh? Uh, Prince Philip was, or King Philip was from South Jersey. Yep. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh no, so he's French. Suck a la bleu. Bicyclette. Des oh, bananas. <laughs> Oh my good Templar, how much do uh, I, I owe for you? It. I knew it'd sneak back in. I knew we'd get s- sneak back in this episode. Just feel it. Was that three for well, three? Well, three well, well. I, think four, I four don't. Four? I do declare I oh, will not be else? able. I'm going to have to not pay you back, my good sirs. Uh, and he ordered them to death. And he's like, "Hey, kill them all." Order sixty six. They would have had to hide some of this vast wealth so i think some of this you know lore and conspiracy comes from like you know there's there's hints of them you know leaving behind a vast treasure whether that be the holy grail or some vast wealth of unknown origins um 
you know, but you hear about that a lot, right? What do you think about that? So, yes, you have this, you know, those who, uh, you know, subscribe to the idea that the Templars did manage to either, uh, you know, abscond away with their uh, vast amount of riches, their secrets, uh, you know, secret antiques and and relics and whatever, because, well, we do know that the the Templars did have a number of relics. And by relics, I mean, you know, the gross uh, body parts that the Catholic church likes to keep in some of their, some of their churches and cathedrals, like, you know, pieces of fingers and arms and legs and, you know, mummified heads and all that weird stuff. But we do know the Templars had some of those heads, man. You hear about the Templar heads. That was part of like what King Philip used against them was the fact that they were worshiping heads. Sure. Yeah. Like they had these little fucking heads with them that they used as what, what's the word called again, sorry, that you use relics or as a relic. There you go. So, um, so now people who, again, like, you know, conspiracy theorists, uh, like us and other people have, uh, said that the, you know, more interesting side of history would tell you that perhaps you could make some connections in the Templars, uh, getting away with their riches and hiding them across the Atlantic Ocean. Oh, in fucking shit. Nova Scotia. Uh, the, the people who's like to make this connection, you know, uh, you know, we could talk about it and get into it now is that the, you get some of these ideas that um, a, a section of Templars had either, you know, commandeered or used their own fleet of ships because they did have boats. Um, they did have access to, you know, sea vessels, uh, or they would have had enough money perhaps to, to get them, or they would have been able to, you know, get across the ocean somehow, you know, actually prior to Columbus discovering, you know, discovering, I'll put that in quotes, uh, discovering America. He, um, well, he did discover America. He just wasn't the first. Right. So <laughs> pre Columbus arriving in America, let's say that arriving in America. Sure. Uh, you could, they, they said that the Templars had already made it there. They had already been there. They had already made, uh, uh, their excursions into there and had hidden their, their secret wealth somewhere in Nova Scotia. Um, well, are we talking like, peop- we talked about this briefly on Oak Island money pit when we talked about that one. Right. So the Oak Island money pit is one of the, th- the, the connections that people like to make that this, that the Oak Island money pit is actually a Templar treasure cache. Like that, that at the bottom of this, you know, seemingly trapped out hole, there is a collection of Templar treasure. Now, did we, did we do an actual case file on Oak Island, the curse yes. Oak Island, or did we do an after hours or uh, no, we did oh, an no, actual okay. case file. Yeah, on we Oak talked Island. about it. Cause like I, I could not recall it at all. So when I was re I felt like I was relearning about Oak Island. I was like, this seems familiar, but yet I don't remember. Cause I was blown away again. We didn't get deep into the Templar collection connection. Did we talk about it all? Like, uh, how they found that network. They had like dug out like a network of like vast, like wells, like basically like a tidal trap to like seal that off. I'm, like, yeah, we right away, I was blo- I was blown away. I was like, this is unbelievable that this isn't talked about it more. Whoever dug or ever, whoever made the Oak Island, the money pit, even though not, nothing's as far as I know, I haven't caught up fully on the show, but they haven't they've, really found anything. They found a Templar, like a Templar cross and they found some parchment yeah, but they haven't really, they never found like the hoard, but whoever did. And listen, make- and, and let's just say, and because now it's privately owned and it's, you know, all the filming, what they find comes out on a TV show and that's where you hear it first. I kind of find it hard to believe. But still they did. There was a like a elaborate like system dug there that sh- maybe shouldn't have been there. But yeah, it's hard to say that was a yeah, but- Templar thing or. Or what it was. Why, like, that's what I don't understand. Like, why? Where is this connection? Why are they getting this? We have no evidence of them, you know, starting any new fucking colonies or something like that in this new area. We have no evidence of them interacting with oh, the right. fucking native tribe, the native Canadians. You know what I mean? Like, I just, I'm I'll, just confusing. I'll, Do I'll they just stash a, their fucking treasure? I'll and pitch fuck a wild off? one for you. Maybe they didn't even stash a treasure there, but the next clue to where the treasure is located. Uh, or maybe so the, or, the or maybe the grail the plate 
uh, a long way to go. Was there. Yeah, but if you're hiding this from, you, you think about who you're hiding it from. They have like immense reach and immense power. We're better than the new land. Acadia. Yeah, but why not settle the new land? Because if you settle the new land, people are going to come visit. Better to just drop I mean, it off. It would have been, it would have been awesome if they did, because maybe they would have like colonized and listen helped with the immunity to smallpox eventually. <laughs> like fuck, <No>. Andrew. <laughs> And I quote, there exists in the order a law so extraordinary on which such a secret should be kept <laughs> that any knight would prefer his head cut off rather than reveal it to anyone. And that secret, my friend, is Nova Scotia. I've never been. I don't know anyone who's oh, ever wow. been to Nova Scotia. Canada's be honest, best kept secret, Nova Scotia. It's, st <laughs> it's still Nova Scotia. Uh, Canada's, the Templar's best kept secret. I mean, but, Scotia kind of sounds like secret. I mean, could, come you on. You can draw the connection. Guys. Secret, secret. But, okay, I've he, got a secret. But hear me out. So let's say that there, there was a, there is a vast treasure there. Or even the, the next clue to where other hordes of Templar treasure would be. You know, we have... You know, it, it was found by just two random guys. <laughs> they dug it out. And, you know, since then, there's been numerous expeditions and numerous things found and talked about. But we do have some nota notable, very notable Masons that did expeditions to Oak Island to try to find, uh, you know, try to hand up finding treasure. One of that is Freddie Roosevelt. Right. Were there he other was ones there. Too? He was he was there in 1911 on an expedition. And I'm saying that he found something. That expedition did find something. He brought it back to the Masons and was like, hey, good sirs, I found this. And due to whatever he found and gave and kept secret, they helped him gain the presidency. Oh, well, you, Boom. you could get down a rabbit hole with like the origin of America and Freemasonry. But that I think that could be a whole nother episode. But maybe. Maybe that's yeah. A, I, 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 there's a bunch of stuff on on that kind of thing too. Uh, but we could yeah, we could talk about that another time. Oh yeah, the, the thirteen <laughs> the, steps. The Reddit rabbit hole is deep. Yeah, you get down that. You get down like the thirteen steps, the pyramid, and the great eye, and the Masonic thirteen, and like all that stuff. But that's a whole nother. We can go somewhere different. That'd be but fun. I think, the, I think that, that evidence of them finding North America com comes from uh, the Roslyn Chapel in Scotland, does it not? Where they found carvings of like maize and like other stuff that should have been native to North America and not known. Right. So you mean things that look like maze kind of <laughs> that are carved into stone? At least one author would uh like who wrote like about the 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 Templars in like the 1980s, I think tried to make the connections like made like made Roslyn Chapel to be out to 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 be this like and I think it's actually in the Da Vinci Code as well. Um where yeah, it's like it is. this is just this chapel. It's it's a beautiful chapel from what I've seen like, you know, pictures and things like that. It's, it's you know, absolutely amazing. Go visit it if you get a chance. Um but it's 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 made out to be you know in the templar lore to be this kind of like uh, all of it is just a giant codex or a giant code so everything within the 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 carvings all the iconography within the chapel are all just one big secret and you have to put it together in order to think so people would cite like you said like andrew was talking about there are certain carvings that you know if you squint, they could be, you know, they could be aloe cactus or there have been is al know, like aloe's not a there cactus. carvings that seem to, to resemble corn, maybe. <laughs> yeah, but like uh, the, the, it was built in 1456. Like that's like 150 years after the fucking fall of the Templar. Sure. Yes. Well, the Templar, they, we, as we talked about before, uh, some did escape to Scotland. I think a large maybe a, a large portion because they're still revered there and in Portugal. So maybe they just, maybe some of them, maybe they went for, they went to, here it is. Got it. They left <laughs> after, after persecution, after the order was disbanded, even like unfoundly, but it was disbanded. They went, they took their treasures because they had ships because they were crossing the Mediterranean all the time. So, I mean, so let's say a couple, let's say they went on a journey and a few of those ships, they probably weren't big enough to really make it, but maybe a couple got lucky. They made it to Greenland. They made it down the coast, Newfoundland, Nova Scotia. They found Oak Island, stashed their money or stashed something, stashed a clue, let's say. They make it back. They get to Scotland. They build this chapel. They see, they have the maze. It's like 150 years later. Though. Like they're not being, being per persecuted anymore. 
everything's like people aren't even talking about them at this point in time. I just feel like Oak Island's a, that like that title trap is too intricate for just a, yet another clue. You're like at the bottom of it, you're like <laughs> another piece of the puzzle. Like what's ne- what's next? Really the shit. fucking water temple? Like yeah. after? Oh, oh, dude, don't get me started the on the water, water temple, temple. Is the hardest temple Jesus by Christ. far. Jesus Christ, ever. I lost fucking months of it's my life to be. stressing the fuck out on that temple, man. That's why I'm going bald. It's the fucking water temple. That and the Detroit Lions, but I don't want to talk about them. <laughs> so I, I will like, okay. So I would say that the ships that they probably used against to get around the Mediterranean probably really sucked and probably would not be able to get across the Atlantic because these are things made for like days of trips where opposed it would take weeks maybe. I don't, I, That's actually, what, not off the top of my head. I don't know how long it takes over there to get over there. That's what I'm but, saying. I will I will say that if they did get over there or they decided to do it, um, I would put my money on the uh, the the Templar Knights changing and they were actually reconstituted under the name the Order of Christ in Portugal. Right. Right. The king there had gotten special, you know, Pope permission for them to reconstitute the Templars as the Order of Christ. And so um, they allowed them to the order to keep the Templar possessions, at least there in Portugal. So now you have the Templars in Portugal under another name. Uh, the only really difference being that they, um, you know, they took their vows of poverty. They took their vows of chastity, but they instead uh, pledged their allegiance to the king of Portugal as opposed to the pope. Right. And now they had essentially been nationalized and now only existed to serve, you know, the port, the crown of Portugal. When it became a, a, a pretty much an extension of the of the, the crown of Portugal, you would have uh, the kings coming after that would install princes and their other, you know, whoever else they felt like putting into her to be the grand master of these new orders. So. One of these was uh, Prince Henry, the navigator, who was appointed in 1418. And he used the money and the wealth that they had, uh, you know, accumulated as the, you know, this Knights Templar, the, the resources that they had gained when they had put been put back together to actually found a navigator school. And these, you know, the Portuguese were, you know, astounding Northern navigators. They had an, an expansive empire. Um you know, it, rivaling some of the, you know, rivaling other European countries at the time, Spain and England and, and things like that. You know, Vasco da Gama, who was the one who discovered the sea route to Africa from, uh, you know, around Africa to India yep. in 1497, he was actually a member of the order. And, you know, the Portuguese ships actually flew the Templar cross on their sails. Mm, the Phoenicians were the first ones to circumnavigate Africa, but. <laughs> so trying to steal our credit here so you have um you would have that all of this so i would think there would be there is some perhaps evidence that you know during that time you know before you know like you know prior to columbus being out there you know if the uh if the the navigator school was founded in the early 1400s maybe they made it a little maybe they made it over there a couple years beforehand maybe it's not, I, I wouldn't say it's out of the realm of pops, possibility, improbable, not impossible. <laughs> right. Okay. Now we've gone pretty far on the Templars, but there's a lot more to cover. So no, we hold on, hold on. We haven't even touched base on how the Templars perpetrated 9-11. <laughs> what are you talking about? <sighs> Boys, so- hear me out. Listen. No, <laughs> the Templars were founded in 1118. Sure. 1118. One plus one plus one plus eight equals 13. Try again, Andrew. 11. 11. 11. Eight, nine, 10, 11. You remember, remember that? The original order had how many knights? I mean, some say nine. Nine, oh, 911. Interesting. But there's different numbers. There's also interesting. Like, I, I heard eight. I heard 12. Dan, yeah, I we're know. Done. there's a lot Dan, of different. Dan, accounts. we're done hearing from you. Okay. No, no, no. We watched that. <laughs> you didn't watch so, the here. fucking lecture. And then listen, September wrong. September 11th, nine, which is September the ninth month, 
plus one plus one equals 11. September 11th is the 254th day of the year. Two plus five plus four equals 11, which means there are 111 days left in the year. New York was the 11th state to endorse the Constitution. And New York has 11 letters. <laughs> New York City has 11 letters. <laughs> uh, the World Trade Center buildings one and two were 110 stories tall. Okay. Uh, what um, <laughs> yeah, uh, it, what was interesting. that? Interesting. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, it goes, everything adds up, man. Listen, what were the flight numbers on September 11th, 2001? Flight 175 equals one plus seven plus five equals 13. Uh, flight 11, Why flight is 13 77, now? You you're talking about 11. Is flight 93, Masonic. left gate 17. Listen, all I'm saying is numbers. <laughs> it's all, follow the numbers. It's all follow the numbers. Numbers did it? Numbers did it? The eye. <laughs> all the numbers. Uh, good. That's good. <laughs> okay, so... We're actually going to turn this Knights Templar into a two-parter because next week we have what? Oh, super we special have the, the long-anticipated return of Mister Freddie Silva is going to come drop some knowledge bombs yeah. about the Knights Templar, the man, mm -hmm. the myth, the legend. So I know we we've, we covered uh, we did a quick history, we did some of the main things, but there's a lot more to cover. We did some so bad if, math. If you got questions for Freddie <laughs> Silva, he's coming next week. <laughs> So case file 168, or maybe we'll call it 167 part two. Not sure yet. Either way, he's coming next week. So if you got questions, make sure, sure to shoot us a message. Listen, and we're, I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. Freddie Silva is such a smooth talker and has not, such a nice voice to listen to. The chance of us getting in any questions are zero because we're going to just be sitting there going like, holy shit, this guy's <laughs> amazing. <laughs> yeah, but it should be fun. There's a lot more to cover. I mean, you, you could have a whole... 100 part podcast on the history of Knights Templar and everything involved and yeah. all that stuff but so that was the basics today maybe they maybe they did discover North America maybe they were part of the Freemasons maybe they had maybe a, they did perpetrate 911 maybe they did Freddie Silva if maybe they did maybe they didn't <laughs> chances are they did not but Freddie Silva will know Dan, the answers Dan that eye roll looked like it hurt <laughs> <laughs> I saw the front of my brain like I could see it all the way back there Anyways, so yeah, shoot us your questions. Freddie Silva coming back for Knights Templar Part 2 next week. Part of the three-story arc that we're doing with Freddie Silva. Yeah, we're going to do Knights Templar, and then we're going to get into some uh, ancient cultures with Freddie Silva again yeah. on, an, on maybe Part 3. Again. Co co coming in <laughs> ancient four years. Ancient cultures redux. Four years. I think it was almost four years ago Freddie Silva came for Crop Circle, so. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited. It's going to be fun. He's a super busy guy, so we appreciate him. He's put out 20 books since coming then. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> a prolific author cool very much so i bought his book it's cool dude though he's fucking oh he's so he's so easy dude he to, does not to to. look how he sounds no it's awesome though he's got the greatest of us look voice. like we sound apparently we all look like <laughs> oh duds. i feel like i look like exactly how i sound people tune into the show and they're like oh these this is what these guys look like hmm, hmm. i'm out this, I mean, like, if you're expecting anything else other than fucking nerds, you're setting yourself up. Yeah, for listen. Disappointment yeah. Here. We're all nerds. If you're coming like, to listen to a want. podcast and then you're coming to watch a live stream, there's a reason we do a podcast <laughs> and we're not fucking TV hosts. Faces right? made for radio. Yeah, faces for Hell podcast. yeah, baby. Podcasts. We barely have voices for radio. What makes yeah. you think we have faces for <laughs> <laughs> If you've never seen us live stream, just keep whatever picture you have in your head. It's probably better. Yeah, never tune in. If And if you do turn um, in, just turn off the video, turn the sound on, and you're good. Where are my... Why don't we get into a little bit of... Space News! Mm-hmm. Oh, Andrew's what? gone. <laughs> and, uh, what okay. happened? He never has space news anyway. Andrew Andrew had all the space news today. Ama uh, ironically, <laughs> the, for the first time, Andrew had all the space news. The one week, the one week he's like, hey, guys, I've got all the space news this week. Sit back, relax. And like Just like that, he's gone. Um, why don't we talk about, I know we touched a little bit about it on Cosmic Channels, but... The mysterious monolith we talked about last week 
has vanished. Uh, as fast as it came, it is now gone in the Utah desert. The three sided metallic object, um, has been removed. So it's probably uh, going to be in someone's backyard being used as a half a coat clothesline. Now, did we even talk about it on aliens or just on cosmic channel? I cosmic think Channel. we, I think we talked about it, the arrival of it, the following week did we not i'm not sure no, we we talked about it disappearing but we haven't talked about its mysterious reappearance or of another either mm. the same or similar monolith in romania yeah so, interesting except this one looks a lot shittier long story short if you didn't know they they were they were like what were they scan they were doing like sheep counting or something from a helicopter and seen this monolith and they in romania Right. No, I'm sorry. They talk, were, they were about charting the, Utah the, one. the migration or population of like bighorn sheep in the area. And then oh, they yes. came across this by helicopter. Yeah. And then they came across this mysterious monument in the middle. I of mean, the Instagrammers were starting to hike to it, take, hmm? make TikToks with it and whatnot. Uh, and then uh, very soon after it appeared, it was gone. Yep. And all that was left within was days, a puddle of piss. Like within like a couple days, like maybe 48 hours, like hadn't even been there for that long. And what did it say, Dan, Gone. again? Gone, bitch? No, it said bye, bitch. Somebody had bye, scrawled bitch. it. One of the first people to arrive there, um, probably the last person to see the the monument is uh, like when he was trekking out there, he said that he had saw like a large flatbed truck like taking off <laughs> with something in the back. And he had jokingly said that, oh, there's the monolith. And then when they actually got there, uh, they, the, was the hole was in the ground where it had been the, the monolith had been, he was said, and then he reported that scrawled next to it was like a note in the dirt that said, bye bitch. And then somebody had pissed next to it. And then we, <laughs> we theorized about how do they know why someone pissed to it? And we think maybe someone just went down, took a little sniff because sure. Um, little taste. but so now over one weekend, uh, it's disappeared and now a new one has popped up in Romania. Um, very similar, exact same look. I mean, it looks a little, doesn't look as polished. Well, it, it's definitely not the exact, it, it's the same as in it's a monolith, but yeah, it's, it looks like it has grinder marks all over it. Yeah. yeah. It's got the same three-sided structure and it doesn't look, it, yeah, it's some weird, like that circular thing. Like it just looks, it, it looks crappy. like someone took a grinder to it and just like did, just went in circles and just everywhere. Like, yeah. really cute, it. Just like all over the thing. It's very, it's the Roman, Romanian monolith appeared in Batka Domni Hill in Piatra Nimt, a city good, good in job. northeastern Romania, very close to the oldest historical monument in the city, the Pet Petrodava de Can Fortress. Good job. Mm. Nailed it. Dude. I didn't practice. That was first try. Aliens <laughs> dropping monoliths, different sizes and shapes, different finishes. And then saying bye, bitch, and bye, taking bitch a and piss when they take them. <laughs> somebody, somebody posted the great comment about one of it is that the fifth one will be Milia Jovovich. Yeah. <laughs> it's hilarious. I was like, yes. Yes. Dallas the Corbin, multi-pass. Get your multi-passes ready. Um, <laughs> there wasn't a lot for space news this week. I mean, there's a lot of wordy stuff that is hard to understand for Anyone, unless you wrote the article, I'm pretty sure. Or your Dan. Or your Dan. Way of saying he's not going to read it because it might be embarrassing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Add one piece of space news. Oh, let's hear it. Well, it's just a historic milestone for SpaceX. Their 100th flight of the Falcon 9. Boom. Woo! Not including one that blew up on the tarmac, but other than that, 100 Falcon 9 launches. We don't talk. We don't talk about that one. We don't talk about the one. <laughs> we don't talk about the one that got away. But other than that, one hundred, the the cent, centurion mark for SpaceX, pretty cool. O only um, way to go up from here. We're entering uh, a whole new era. We got the he Ooh. the heavy the what do they call the the B the big fucking rocket the BFG? They're start, yeah. they're starting to test that one more and more. So it's just a matter of time awesome. before they're shooting off. And they got uh, nerds. They got Planet Express <laughs> on the way as well, going to Mars. Honestly, Fucking space this, nerds. Other than other than other than there's a full lunar eclipse tonight, which is Monday, November the thirtieth. Which by the time you listen to this, unless you listen live, you're gonna miss. There's not a lot of good space news this week. It's just it's just not. That was that was a, probably the most exciting thing. Yeah. No auroras. I'm sure no there might be some, but by the time I, you listen, they'll be gone. Why don't we 
let's fire up the randomatron see if it'll give us one more store i know we're switching over to the x4 pretty soon here the x4 is half built the x3 is in shambles it might work it might not let's fire it up let's see what we get, get. the fire extinguisher ready boys <laughs> I got, I got a, yeah. I got a can of beer here. I'll pour it out on it if it needs it. But okay, let's, uh, we'll try it here. Oh, oh, it's all fucked up. Oh, uh, printer's still working though. Oh, there we go. There we go. Oh, there's like, it's like singed. Oh god. Oh, 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 it's smoking. <laughs> all right, this is a fan submission from. A person. From a person. A totally real person. Place or thing. Yeah. After hearing the Charlie Red Star episode, I felt it only to be perfectly fitting to tell my story of what I would consider to be my own Charlie Red Star. A little background info first. Our family has a vacation home in Brighton, Maine. Bridgeton, Maine? Bridgeton, Maine. Sure. I read that terribly. What's new? Side fact, Bridgeton happens to be where Stephen King based a lot of his novels. Shit. Uh, it is a good-sized house sitting on around 60 acres, most of which being woods. It is a two-story, older-looking farmhouse with a wraparound porch and a long dirt driveway with old hand-built uh, from the late 1800s, rock walls on both sides. There's a cemetery at the beginning of the driveway, which is uncommon in that area. Not relevant to the story, but makes it pretty creepy. I just want to paint a perfect picture. The closest neighbor's house is about 200 feet behind us, which is a vacation home to whoever owns it and is hardly ever there. Uh, they're, they're, the other closest homes are at the top of the street, about a quarter of a mile away. Other than the field... The rest of the surrounds are woods, and through a clearing in the tree line behind the house, you could see a mountain, Shawnee Peak. If you were to walk out the front door of the house and step off the porch and walk in a straight walk straight ahead 50 feet, you would run into our fire pit. This sits on the corner of the grass field, measuring around six acres long. Okay, enough of the background picture. It's story time. Oh yeah. Hang on to your butts. It was a long weekend, and so a small group of six of us decided to go up to our main house for what we called a brain reset. The group consisted of my cousin Steve, friend Dan, and his girlfriend Heidi, my girlfriend at the time, Bree, and myself. It really all began Saturday night. Now, I mentioned it was a long weekend, having Monday off, but we would need to leave early as Bree was a dog walker, watcher, groomer, and had to take care of some pooches Monday. Saturday was typical hanging by the lake and swimming, followed by taking our wood beater, woods beater Jeep out for a rip around the trails we made and playing board games in the house. The night was creeping up and so we did like any other night and got things ready to start a fire at the fire pit and then and do a last minute look at how many beers were left for the night that's important having the fire started now dusk set in and my cousin steve noticed at the opposite corner of the field something a little strange a red light just hovering in one spot looking like a bright looking like a star but brighter and seemingly moving he tells us to watch it and we oblige. Trying to figure out if it's moving or the trees are swaying and it's our eyes playing tricks on us. I only caught a quick glimpse of it before the tree line made it disappear. After it leaves our line of sight, it didn't seem to reappear. <coughs> COVID. We continued to talk about it for some time until we drank enough to forget about it. The only thing that we that really stood out for me was no aircraft fly that low in the area due to the mountain directly behind us, except the local seaplane, but that wouldn't fly at night. And this light we saw didn't 
didn't have uh, blinking radar lights, nor did we hear any plane noises. Fast forward to the next day. Having made the best of what we could, uh, Sunday time came when we decided it would be best for us to leave and get a jump start on traffic. Driving home, I noticed a red light in the sky. It seemed to be the same light we saw the previous night. It appeared a bit ahead of us, above the tree line slightly to my left. <coughs> it almost looked as if it was staring into a plane's headlight, but bright red. And again, no radar lights or noise. I tried to, I tried to point it out to Bree sitting beside me, but trees happened to be my worst enemy, and a cluster of trees blocked out the light. I knew the road well enough that coming up was a causeway, an opening where they keep a ferry and a seaplane docked up alongside many shops. I knew I'd get a good view of whatever it was. At this point, I was thinking it was Mars close to the Earth and reflecting the sun or possibly a Chinese lantern. To my disappointment, the causeway did not show whatever I saw. However, continuing the drive a few traffic lights later, I did see it again this time on my right side. How could it have switched sides if it was Mars? The road we just drove down was almost perfectly straight. I instantly get Brie to look at it and she does see it this time. Not getting the best view and then guess what? More goddamn trees. Luckily, lucky for me, I've driven this road countless times and I know about a half mile up the road is a field on both sides of us, enough to get a good open sky view. And it didn't disappoint this time. There it was. I told Bree I want a picture of whatever it is. Maybe I can zoom in and see what we're looking at. I pulled the truck off the side of the road, throw on the hazards and jump out. She does the same. I walk around the front of my truck, never breaking eye contact with this object in the sky. I'm staring at it. I reach in my pocket to get my phone. As I'm pulling out the phone, that thing takes off from a complete standstill. <clears throat> like a shooting star, only different. It blinked out. There is no other way to describe it. It left a trail like a shooting star, but red. And towards the end of the trail, just blinked and was gone. I don't know what we saw. I immediately called my cousin and told him to look in the sky again, telling him my story. This is not my only time seeing this Charlie Red Star, but definitely one of my more memorable ones. Anyways, I hope you liked my story. I have some more, and we'll be sure to write them in. Sorry for being a bit long, but once I start writing, I can't stop. Love the show and everything you guys do. You guys make my work days tolerable. Cheers, everyone. Kyle. Uh, thanks, Kyle. A little, thanks, Kyle. little play for Charlie. It looks like as soon as he, Charlie uh, knew you were watching, going to film, took off. You know, that's very... Uh, yeah, shy. Yeah. Very typical of, uh, you know, the Charlie Red Star stories we've heard about. Just, just came for a beer run, got spotted. Yeah, toying, fucked toying off, fucked off. Fuck, we busted. Uh, we didn't talk about this Good before, one. so I won't even say it. It'd be a mystery. Huh? Okay. I won't even say it. We just didn't talk about it before. Well, now I'm confused. What do you mean? Yeah, me I too. So, so, you got a secret no, secret? We normally you do, we didn't talk about before, and I don't want to bring it up right now because I'll feel embarrassed. Why? Do it. No one knows? What we didn't talk about no. before that we normally talk about that we give every week. Oh, Patreon of the uh, week. Or theory. Theory. <laughs> yeah. Shit, we didn't. We didn't we talk didn't, about uh, it. Just didn't come up. Totally forgot about it. Whoa, I got you a got guy. Someone? Hold on. On the fly? Or did Yeah, what's it? Uh, Rojas. Gilmero Rojas, I think his name is. Have we given it to him before? He's been posting crazy shit on, on uh Name Facebook sounds familiar, but I, that might be just because he's a Patreon supporter. Yeah, okay, I found him. Boom, on the fly. Let's give it to him. Gilmero Anark Rojas. The dope Is name. it Gilmero or Guillermo? I think it's Guillermo know, Rojas. Dude. Guillermo. <laughs> that makes more sense. Like <laughs> he's been he's just been all over. He's been first he posted uh he asked a question, how did we get how did you guys get into the pod? What were you looking for? He explained oh, how he okay. did that. He made he made a poll about what segment everybody's favorite is. He's been doing so lots. He's of been cool super shit. active on the theory Facebook Braden, group. Braden, 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 <laughs> Braden. What's your favorite? It's like, how did you find these guys, Braden? Who? What's your favorite segment, Braden? Braden. <laughs> Braden, rename the show. Hey, 
Braden. Thanks, Guillermo. That's why you're Guillermo. Yeah, that's why. Gilmer- what did coming I say soon, Braden theorist theorist. Guillermo. <laughs> Guillermo. All right. You're the theorist. There you go. Theorist of the week. We appreciate it. Sorry, we weren't, weren't prepared that time, but that sounds like the perfect pick. So there you that go. was embarrassing. Also, if you're listening to this, out. our new show, Cosmic Channels, is out. Listen. Search it anywhere. Anywhere you listen to podcasts, it's available. Like, subscribe, follow, give us a five-star review. Give us a one-star review. We don't care. Preferably five-star. Why don't you read the new Patreons? Let's get out of here. Just before Patreons, this is something that really affected uh, me and Braden for sure last week. Yeah, We've talked about it before. We once had a buddy who had uh, who probably would have been on this show if not for some terrible circumstances in his life. Uh, we got to give a, a quick cheers to our boy Zach, who lost his battle with the booze and mental health just last week. And it's just, you know it's super shitty. Like a, after someone after someone dies like that, you start like reminiscing of maybe what you could have done a little different. I'm tearing up a little bit, but you know if you have a buddy or something who's hit rock bottom, you just you maybe you're waiting for him to come back. You're like, ah, oh, he just needs you know he hit rock bottom, turn his life around. Maybe that won't happen. So yeah, uh, make the call because, like I said, it's it's been a tough week. And looking back at mine and Zach's last conversations, I'm not I'm not happy with how I left things. So it's same. It's definitely one of those things that if you have someone that needs help, reach out to them. Yeah, and it, like you might just think they will come out of it or whatever, but it's man, the addiction and the mental health can be a real bitch. And it's once like if you don't. I know it's easy to say now, like, I wish I just wouldn't done this and this, but I didn't do it. I know it's not my fault he's gone, but I just can't help but thinking if, like, just would have maybe tried a little harder, maybe he would still be here, so. Cheers, Zach, buddy. Gonna miss you, and I hope, uh, hope the next life treats you, treats you well. Anyways, enough of the sad stuff, man. Everyone's Everyone's got a sad story, but this week for supporting the podcast, I truly appreciate it. This week's Patreon supporters. Dan Cavino. Isaiah Terry. Jacob Hart. Miguel Reyes. Cyber Gore. And JV Williams. Thank you very much for supporting the show. If you're not already, head over to our Patreon. We got a bunch of bonus content, extended after hours of every case file, access to the live stream, and all the rest of that good shit. We'd appreciate it. I think that's it for this week. And as we always say at the end of these things, keep those eyes on the skies. Peace, everybody. We'll see you in after hours. Peace.